chord progression is, is C major, E7, A minor, and F major. And if you're a music theory nerd like me, that's a one, three dominant, six minor, and four major. Now the odd man out in this scenario is that three dominant, the E7. If you know a little bit about music theory, you know there is no E7 in the key of C major. That should be an E minor. Uh, but what we've done here is raised that G to a G sharp. And what's really great about this progression, and I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate here in just a second, you have this chromatic uh, approach. So you have a G to G sharp to A, that nice little chromatic passage in that built into the chord progression. And this sounds amazing when you have vocal harmonies or st a string part or even a guitar solo because you, you get that little it's, it's just like the coolest thing. But at the same time, you also get this little descending pattern. You actually have two descending patterns within the, the chord progression. Now, one way to look at the E7 in the key of C major is as what's called a secondary dominant. That's where you essentially borrow a dominant chord, a dominant seven chord from a neighboring key. So in this case, you're borrowing that E7 from the key of A minor, or well, a harmonic minor. Maybe it doesn't really matter exactly where you're borrowing the chord from, but it's it's interesting to think about uh, in the context of, well, why does this chord progression sound so freaking cool? So essentially what you're doing is you're changing keys for one chord. Now your ears don't really know that you've changed keys or changed back until you get back to the C major because you're going from E7 to A minor, which is A minor is in the key of C and A minor, and then the next chord is F, which F major is also in both keys. The other cool thing that's going on here is you have what's called a, a half cadence. You have that, that F, the four chord, resolving back to the one. Now, it's not quite as strong as a five one, but it still has a lot of authority. It, it does bring us back to the one. Uh, so what you'll see a lot of times is that this progression is used as sort of a loop. Uh, I think a perfect example of that is the Proclaimers over and done with, where almost the whole song is just C, E7, A minor, and F. And that is a really cool song. If you haven't heard it, I suggest you check it out. The Proclaimers did a lot more music than just uh, whatever, I would walk 500 miles. So uh, be sure to check that out. Some other songs that use this type of progression, but maybe in a different key, would be Weezer's All My Favorite Songs. And that again, perfect example of the, the, the progression looping. Now that song is E major, G7, C, C sharp minor, A, and it just loops around. With, uh, I think with the exception of the intro of that song, which is actually in a different key, uh, you know, go Weezer. <laughs> Some other favorite songs of mine that use this progression would be uh, First Day of My Life by Bright Eyes. Or I Will Buy You a New Life by Everclear. I think a classic example of this would be Roy Orbison's You Got It. The, the, the chorus is absolutely iconic and it, it makes a very good use of this progression in the key of A major. So you're going A major to C sharp seven to F sharp minor to D and then back around. Now, unlike some of these other examples, that song has a proper verse chorus structure uh, where the, chor the chorus and the verse are very distinct. Uh, you don't, it's not just like the sort of endless loop of, of the, uh, this beautiful chord progression. Now, there's a number of songs that make use of sort of a, a variation of the one dominant three, six, four. So I, I think a good example of that would be the Pixies, Where Is My Mind, where you have one, six, and then dominant 
three, four. One, six, three, four. Uh, but it's the same chords, just a different order. Now, I thought it was interesting when I was researching this subject that I couldn't find where anybody else on the internet has done a uh, comprehensive list or even attempted a list of songs using this progression. There's tons of, of articles talking about a one, four, five progression or a one, six, two, five or a one, six, four, five, one, five, six, four. Uh, if you know music theory, you're following me. If you don't, you it just sounds like I'm, I'm saying math stuff. Um, I promise one day it will all make sense to you. So I couldn't find a list. So anyway, I, I wrote an article that's on, available on my website. I started my own list and uh, I would really appreciate if in the comments, pitch in some other songs that didn't make that list. Now, I don't think I, I don't know if I listed everything here in this video, uh, but it just seemed like such a shame that this awesome progression sort of was just going to waste. There's not enough people talking about it. And I think it's it's one of like the sort of unsung heroes of, of pop music, honestly. So anyway, if you found this video helpful, interesting, or you just think I'm a cool guy, I would really appreciate if you would subscribe, like the video. I guess you can hit the bell icon. I never do, but like every, all my favorite YouTubers ask me to. So I guess you should do that. Uh, is, is what I'm saying. Anyway, until next time, thanks so much. I'm Mike Iman. Check me out at mikeiman.com. I got a lot of new articles that I'm putting up there uh, as I'm able to write them. So thanks so much for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.